at the heart of the Nellanair um, Mark II climate control system uh, that Jaguar used in their Series 2 and Series 3 XJ6 cars and their XJS in the same period lies this little servo unit. This thing controls everything that the uh, climate control system does. Um, <clears throat> what we have here is a small electric motor like this, uh, which drives these cams, and these cams activate switches and valves and uh, what have you. Over here on the right hand side, we have two vacuum valves. Those two vacuum valves uh, operate the heater control valve <clears throat> and also the air conditioning door. And then we have also two levers. These uh, operate mixing doors. And the cams themselves, they operate the switches. Um, switch over here for air conditioning, the limit switches here for the for the servo motor itself, and then the switches that control um, the fan speed. So um, the, the fan speeds change as this thing rotates around. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the way you make this thing work is you actually operate this little motor here and run it back and forth. So any permanent magnet DC motor like this um, will reverse direction if you reverse the polarity of the voltage going into it. So that's how this thing works. So uh, this little control board I have, <clears throat> that's exactly what it does. It reverses the, the, it reverses the voltage to the, to the motor depending on where we have the temperature control uh, a wrist at or potential on set and also the location of this thing here. This is the feedback pot. Uh, it moves with the servo or with with these cams so that it returns a signal to tell the controller uh, where the thing is rotated in this in this arc as it moves around. <clears throat> so uh, it's connected to the orange wire, the green wire, and the yellow wire which I have cut here because this uh, pot's defective. Anyway, that's the unit. So just a little overview of what we, what's going on. So um, basically all we do with the controller is operate this motor and move this motor back and forth based on where the temperature control is set. So uh, we just want it to follow the temperature control. That's it. So now we will um, get into the, the, the way the controller works. Okay, uh, to see how it works, let's have a look at the schematic. Uh, this is basically the schematic for our the, the standard 293 version. Um, it's the same as I've been using for a long time, except for some variation in the output of this, but otherwise it's the same. So it has a couple power supplies, uh, an input, an interface in, in the middle, and an output driver over here, and it goes down here, of course, this is where you connect your wires. So that's it. First, we'll have a look at the power supplies. Um, the first power supply is a plus and minus five volt power supply for the 741 op amp. The um, easiest way to, to accomplish that is to use a pair of zener diodes in series uh, with a resistor. The resistor is a current limiting device. Without it, uh, basically, you'd be putting a straight short circuit across the 12 volts and that wouldn't make anybody happy. So, um, and one disadvantage of this is there is a constant current flow into this thing, but uh, it's so um, it's so low, it's 100 milliamps or something uh, maximum. So it's really not not an issue. Um, it would be nice if it didn't do it, but uh, it's acceptable. It's one of the acceptable ranges, and it gives us a very stable uh, uh, plus and minus five volts relative to this center of reference. So if we if we go from here to here, uh, put the uh, ground or black wire on the meter here, you'd read negative five volts here. If you read here, you have a, a positive five volts. So basically it's five volts across each one of them. So, and that's what the 741 gets. And I want to when it gets that, it's a happy little critter. So uh, that's that power supply. The other one is just a standard um, um, LM7805, um, voltage regulator. It's a five volt regulator which puts gives us allows gives us five volts uh, for the L293. It likes to have a stable five volt supply. So that's it. So basically two power supplies, this one and that one, and then that's it. So next we move on to the 741 itself. The 741 um, I have it configured this way as a comparator in that I use it to compare two voltages. Um, one voltage 
comes in on pin 3, and this is the voltage that I get from the temperature knob, and when you turn the temperature control, this one down here is the feedback. So these two are part of the voltage dividers that are connected to pin 2 and 3. Uh, R3 is a compensating resistor that um, but the, um, because of the way we connect this thing, pin the blue wire, which goes back into the circuit, um, is still connected into the system. And the other side of the blue wire goes through the thermistor and the dash back to, the, to, to 12 volts. So that biases uh, this input slightly here. <clears throat> this 10K, pot here, 10K resistor here uh, will compensate for that. And, and allows this thing to swing full from full cold to full hot, regardless of what the temperature inside the car is. Uh, this 10K resistor's purpose is just a, a, a null resistor, which gives us a certain amount of time in the middle here uh, so that we don't just flip uh, full, hot, full high to full low. If this was not in there, then this thing would not be stable in the middle, so it would never stop. It would always be there driving full high or full low. So that's what this 10K right here is for. This is the setup of the two um, voltage dividers that go into the input of 741. Um, just all by its little self here. Um, we have, as you see, there's two 10K uh, resistors in series here and two basically 2K uh, resistors in series here. Um, when we move the wiper on the temperature set knob, we vary the voltage across this between half of right here, which would be half of the 5 volts, 2.5 volts, all the way up to 5 volts. And same thing over here. As this one moves back and forth, it varies between 2.5 and, and 5 volts. If the inputs on 2 and 3 are the same, then the output on 6 here uh, will be null or the zero point or zero reference. If the voltage here on pin 3 is higher than the voltage on pin 2, then our output on this one is going to be at plus 5 volts. So it's going to be higher. Uh, if the uh, if the input here on 2 is higher than this one is, then this one's going to be lower and we're going to have, we're going to be at minus 5 volts here relative to this uh, relative to this center reference of the voltage of the plus or minus 5 volt power supply. So it clears mud. Anyway, that's that's what it does. Um, so we take that signal, uh, comes out of pin 6 on the 741, uh, goes through uh, R7, which is a current limited resistor, and I connected it to a pair of uh, optocouplers. They, as you see, the optocouplers are connected so that the, um, the anode of one diode, like pin 1 on this one, is connected to pin 6, whereas uh, here it's the cathode that's connected to it. And the other two connections are in series, I mean connected together, and they go back to zero reference on the plus and minus 5 volt power supply. So when uh, pin 3 goes high, pin 6 goes high, when pin 6 goes high, um, this goes high and this one will conduct. This one will not because it's, now it's got positive on the cathode, it doesn't work. So this one conducts and this transistor will conduct and pin 4 will be pulled low. Uh, this is the opposite. So when this thing goes low, now uh, this one, this is going to be at minus 5 volts. This one's going to be at neutral. So this one's going to conduct. Uh, this other transistor here will conduct. And this pin 4 will go low. So what we need over here for the motor driver, which is our next step, is we need, we have, um, the control, when it's high, the motor is not enabled. When it goes low, it enables that, that particular leg of the driver. So if one of these is high and the other one is low, then the output of the motor driver is going to be, one output will be high, the other will be low. So the motor will run in one direction. If we reverse them, the motor runs in the opposite direction. So basically that's all there is to it. So if um, all we need to do is provide a low on one of these, leave the other one high, and this is a pull-up resistor here, so that keeps the line high. Um, these two one case or pull-up resistors keeps the line high until we pull it low, and when we pull it low, then one of them's high, one of them's low. Um, and then the outputs over here, um, the one of them goes high, one goes low, and if these things are both the same, then the output here is 
they'll both either be high or low. And generally, I think they're high. So uh, I set these things up in parallel. So the outputs of the two, um, I didn't say this, but the 293 is a dual motor driver. So I'm operating both uh, parts of the dual motor driver. It would, it would effectively run two motors if we had them, but we don't. It's nothing that use for us. So I set them up in parallel um, so that they run, both of them carry half the load, and one of them goes out here, the other one goes out here, and these go down actually to drive the motor. Originally, I had it set up so that I was only using one half of it to drive the motor and the other half to drive the LEDs, but I realized there's no reason why I couldn't just put the LEDs uh, um, across the motor drive and parallel these, and that way uh, I might... Um, I put less stress on the motor driver. So anyway, so that's what that's how that works. So the next we go to this one. This is a uh, TC4420. Um, this is an H-bridge type uh, motor driver. It's a higher current device, and I mentioned it in the, in about the videos. This is the schematic for the way it works. Um, this schematic uh, I got it from um, Lewis Laughlin at BristolWatch.com. Uh, he has a variety of H-bridge type um, drives on there, and this one looks to me like it would be the most interesting for me. Um, and it has the capability of operating at a much higher current. Uh, and as you see, it goes back here to the op amps in the same, I mean, the optocouplers in the same way the other one did. So uh, there's nothing different there. The difference is actually here in the in the output of it. So the next one is relays. And relays was the original way that, that uh, Dell and Air did it. They used relays to drive the motor. These things are set up in a similar type of H-bridge so that when one of them energizes, it goes high and, you know, and the other one stays low and vice versa. So it drives the motor back and forth. And that, uh, this is just another option. It carries a higher current. So this one, uh, these little relays will carry two amps apiece. The next step is, oh, this is just, see, uh, this one I, I parallel these and put the LEDs. These are the two LED outputs. And I started used to run these with a 1K resistor and I discovered that that, that was wasted current. So um, now I'm putting a 4.7K on resistor uh, in them and they still glow and works fine. It uh, reduces the current substantially. And same true with the power LED, which is, this is the green one. Um, just a power LED and usually it's just in circuit in series with the power supply. Down here is the uh, the part we've all been waiting for is the output. This um, um, here's the temp set pot, the feedback pot. Feedback pot's on the on the servo, as we know. Temp set pot is the one on the dash, and here's the motor. And this is how these are connected. So um, the red and purple wires go to the meter. Uh, the blue wire goes to the temp set pot and the white wire, and the yellow wire and the green wire they go to the feedback pot. And here, uh, the brown wire is connected uh, to 12 volts. And the black wire over here connected to ground. And that is it. So um, I hope that I hope that helps explain why it works. It's a very simple circuit. Anybody who um, has any just basic knowledge uh, can, can make this thing, can build one. And it's really not that hard to build on the first board if somebody's interested in doing it. So anyway, um, take care of you guys. Be safe out there and uh, happy motoring.